What's up, Bulls Nation? The Chicago Bulls lose another one, losing the game to the Boston Celtics 124 to 113 in a game where we all pretty much knew they were going to lose. But the surprise part of this game is that the Bulls didn't play terribly. They actually stuck in the game for most of it. And part of that was they didn't shoot bad, okay? The Bulls shot 57% from the field, 38% from the three-point line, and they also had 36 assists this game. But that was not enough, even though normally it would be against most teams. And that's because they were playing the Boston Celtics. One of the best teams in the league with one of the best players in the league in Jason Tatum. And they also are one of the better shooting teams in the league. And that really showed tonight the Boston Celtics hitting 21 of 48 three-point shots for 44% from the field. And they also had 41 rebounds. Luke Cornett did amazing to stop us on the boards this entire game. And that's just the thing that did the difference. When you go against a team and they hit 20-plus three-pointers on you, it's going to be hard for you to win, especially when they're good at defense and can stop some of your best players. We're also going to talk about Ayo Sumu not having the best game after hitting his career high, Dalen Terry playing amazing and aggressive, and just an overall great, great game from Hauser for the Celtics. But we'll talk about all that after the intro. Give me the hot sauce! Give me the hot sauce, Bob. Welcome to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast. So welcome back to Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. My name's Quentin. I'm your host. And if you're new to the channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more of these videos. And with that, let's get into talking Bulls. Okay, this game did not go the way that we wanted it to. But it went better than we thought it would. And the goal with that, the statement that that means, is pretty much I thought the Bulls were going to lose. I really did. I did not think they were going to be in this game whatsoever. I thought it was going to be a complete blowout, and we were going to look like a trash team that did not deserve to be on the court. But that's not what happened. We played decently. At least some of us did. But first, before we talk about that, I want to talk about the Boston Celtics. The issue with the Bulls losing this game is the Boston Celtics played like a team. They all know what they're supposed to do. They all know their role, and they stick to it, right? Derek White had 17 points, three rebounds, six assists on six for 14 shooting. You had Jason Tatum with 26 points, two rebounds, six assists. He shot eight for 20, but honestly, this was a game where the role players, the bench stepped up, and he didn't have to do a lot, right? I think in the second half, he got his first like shot in the second half in the fourth quarter. He didn't have to do a lot. He let his teammates take the lead, and they needed it with Jalen Brown out. They needed it with Porzingis out, and they stepped up and had people take the place of the scoring load, right? You had Hauser with 23 points, 5 rebounds, 8 for 9 from the field, 7 for 8 from the 3-point line, and he just destroyed the Bulls. He really showed why we are one of the worst teams in the league at getting out to shooters. He's just open. I don't know what it is where the Bulls just leave people open or they help too much off of people, but they tend to do it a lot. And it even happened at one point where you saw Kobe White let an alley-oop go, and when they looked at him, he looked at Hauser was like, what do you want me to do? Right? I'm not leaving him, not after the game he's having. So when you have that kind of spacing, and the Boston Celtics do, because everyone on this team can shoot, it's very hard to guard. Al Horford with 23 points, 8 rebounds, 5 for 10 from the 3-point line. Hauser was 7 for 8 from the 3-point line. Cornette, 8 points, 13 rebounds, 4 assists. He really stopped Vooch and Drummond from getting to the paint, right? They, they were having a tough time in the post. They were having a real tough time getting rebounds. And he plays great against the Bulls every single time he plays us. It's really annoying, right? Anybody the Bulls let go, anybody that the Bulls do not have on their team anymore, come back and have career games. Pritchard off the bench, 15 points, 3 rebounds, 8 assists. He really helped this team off the bench, really got them some extra points. And Brissett, 7 points, 4 rebounds, 3 for 3 from the field, 1 for 1 from the 3-point line. The one shot where they left someone wide open, he hit it. Because, like I said, everyone on this team can shoot. But that takes me to the Bulls. <clears throat> now, the Bulls the Bulls didn't do terrible. But the issue here is we had an off game from Ayo Desumu. Ayo Desumu, 14 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists. I don't think he was as, as aggressive as he was last game. And you can see him coming off that career high. Maybe he was a little bit tired. Maybe his legs just weren't under him. 
but he started to attack early. He was getting out on the fast break, doing what you're supposed to do, and that kind of slowed out. And that just might, like I said, be because he's tired. Um, you also saw Kobe White, 11 points, 5 rebounds, 10 assists, coming in his second game back from his injury. Same thing. Wasn't very aggressive on the offensive end. I didn't see him do a lot as far as pushing the pace like he usually does. There also were some off-the-dribble moves that he normally would do in games that he did not do this game, and that might just be something where he's getting his legs, he's getting his energy back under him. Vooch, 14 points. Two rebounds, five assists. He had a tough game when, you know, in this game. Cornette really stopped him from doing a lot of the things that he normally does. And he also was settling for three-point shots because for some reason, every time, and I talked about it last video, when the Bulls see a player hit consecutive threes or a team goes on a run and starts getting hot from the three-point line, the Bulls assume they also have to shoot threes. The Bulls will be playing Fast pace, getting out on the fast break. They'll have 15 points off of fast break uh, drives. They'll have Vooch in the post with 10 to 15 in the quarter. And then the other team will get hot and they'll go, we'll stop doing all of that and only shoot threes to get ourselves to stay in this game. It's just, it's a curse. They really think that that's the way basketball works. You can do whatever you want, find the mismatches. But if a team starts shooting, you have to shoot too. It's just how the game works. Alex Caruso, 14 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists. He had an Alex Caruso night. Once again, tweaked his ankle. The man is the most tweaked, injury-prone person I've ever seen. I love Alex. I love the way he plays. I love that his shooting is amazing right now. But it scares me because every game there's a moment where he hits the floor and it looks like he could be out at least for a week. I need them to be more careful with him. <laughs> like, literally, as Stacy said, do not let him practice. You know what you're going to get. Hey, Alex, sit out every practice, only playing games. Don't get injured. That's what we need as a Bulls team. Torrey Craig off the bench, 11 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, and the bench is what really stopped this game from being a blowout. Torrey Craig with 4 for 4 shooting, 3 for 3 from the 3-point line. He got hot. He came in, and Torrey Craig is one of those players who might fit well on the Celtics. He knows his role. He plays his role. He came in to shoot. He came in to play defense. He came in to give energy. That's exactly what he does on a night-and-night -night basis, and he does it at 110% each time. We also saw Dalen Terry get some confident minutes, 12 points, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 5 for 8 from the field. He had an amazing, amazing putback dunk. He was getting to the rim. He had a poster dunk, and he even got a technical. It was a stupid technical, but he got a technical for hanging on the rim for 2 seconds. Now, this is a call I don't expect to happen a lot for anyone else but Dalen Terry. And the issue is he was going full force towards the rim. So if he would have let go of the rim, he probably would have ended up backflipping and landing on his head. Or he would have landed on another player. So I don't see why he got teched or teed for even hanging on the rim for that little bit amount of time. I've literally seen players hang and do pull-ups and not get technicals. Maybe it's because he's young and was celebrating. But Dalen played amazing this game. He showed confidence. He showed handles passing he was getting to the rim he showed strength he showed iq He was playing good defense he was playing jason tatum on defense that's what you want to see from dalen terry this game is something that shows you why the bulls see so much in him he's a tall guard who can play defense who can shoot when he's confident who can get to the rim and who's fast at moving the ball he gets out just like io and for a moment there we had io Kobe and Dalen Terry and that's where we went on a pretty good run they were getting out playing with energy and getting to the rim and that's where the Bulls shine the bench stopped this from being a blowout Andre Drummond 7.6 rebounds did an Andre Drummond thing didn't play too well against Luke Cornett Luke Cornett owned us it happened but the Bulls had to settle for hoping DeMar DeRozan's 28 points 6 rebounds and 9 assists would take them to the victory the Bulls are not a team that you can rely on one player right now OK, DeMar is going to score 20 to 30 points. Teams know this, but you have to have a team where desumo has got 20, Kobe's got 20, DeMar's got 20, Vooch got 18. That's how the Bulls have to score if they want to win games now. The Bulls showed this game that they are contenders, as AK would say, contenders, but they're not a playoff team because Boston is a playoff team. And the Bulls stayed in this game for a little bit, but when it came down to crunch time, when it came down to the fourth, Boston Celtics said, no, nah, we know how to play. They hit the mismatches. They started switching Jason Tatum on Kobe every play. They know he can't guard them. They started getting the wide open shots that they needed. 
They started boxing out correctly because they know the Bulls aren't good at having their guards get to the rim for rebounds. The Boston Celtics played the way you need to play when you want to win a game in the clutch. And that's because they are a championship contending type of team. They know how to play when the chips are on the table. And that's something the Bulls kind of know how to do, but they're not learning to do it consistently. Even though they've had the most clutch games in the league this year, they still are not the best team at playing in those games. Right? But what I want to do, I want to hear from you guys. I know I asked that every video, but this is a little bit different. What I want to hear from you guys is what are some ideas that you want to see on this channel? What are some videos? Do you want to see reactions? Do you want to see me talk about fan you know, questions? What are we going to do? This channel is not just for me. It's for you as well. It's a channel where I want to talk to you guys as well as make sure it's a community that you enjoy. And also, if you're just a basketball fan in general, I do have another channel. I will link it down in the description. It's going to be another podcast, but it's going to be about the entire NBA. It is called the Got Next Podcast. We're going to be going strong. It's going to be a lot of different things. There's going to be player reactions. There's going to be player breakdowns, documentaries, different things like that. So make sure you tune into that and give it a follow. With that, I hope you guys have a great night. I hope you enjoyed. And like I said, if you loved what you see, if you like the videos, hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 1,000 subscribers. Y'all have a good night. Peace.